Okay, so this is Vincent van Gogh. Uh, some of you have probably heard of him. 1853 to 1890. Although he only lived uh, 37 years, um, he painted a lot. Uh, he had, a, you know, almost a thousand oil paintings, a number of watercolors, drawings, sketches, and prints. Uh, he didn't decide to become a painter until about uh, 18, uh, 1880, and he painted until 1890. Although he was interested in art most of his life, it was in his 30s that he really solidified and uh, became an artist. Okay, the main painting that I wanted you to see of Vincent van Gogh before we see some of his other work is uh, Starry Night. Now, Vincent van Gogh, uh, he was more than mentally ill at different times in his life, and uh, he committed himself to a hospital for mental health uh, in Paris. Um, and from his window, he painted a number of different scenes. He painted uh, his bedroom in the hospital, and then as well as different cypress trees at different times of day and so forth. So this is actually a view from his window at, the, at his hospital. And here you can see the, the small city there. Uh, Arles, I believe is what it's called. And um, here you see the, the cypress tree, you know, climbing up right there in front of him. In this very, you know, uh, very... Um, surreal sky. Uh, he's creating an impression of the sky that is very much idealized. Um, of course, if you look at the night sky, the, the stars um, don't just sit there, they actually twinkle and move and, uh, and different things are happening and blinking. So he's trying to recreate that with this painting, with, again, very thick, heavy paint of that impasto Italian style of painting that other impressionists before Van Gogh were sort of mastering. Um, like Monet and Manet and so forth. So, uh, Starry Night, Vincent van Gogh. So, Vincent van Gogh, uh, The Starry Night, painted in 1889, uh, so he only lived to 1890, so this is uh, in the last year of his life. Oil on Canvas, it's at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, although it travels around a bit and there's been some reproductions. Um, so, with the elements of art in this, very much uh, the elements of uh, um, color. So, let me circle color there. Color, and let's go ahead and go with uh, texture there, too. Because there is some heavy, heavy texture paint on this painting. Um, what I noticed first about this painting is our... And this painting is realistic because... And as I look at this painting, I can almost hear, like, what are some of the sounds that you would hear of this small uh, French city? Uh, this painting is not realistic because, so you're thinking of reasons why it's realistic and reasons why it's not realistic. And then we're going to look at some more of his artwork here. So every artist uh, eventually does some sort of self-portrait. The great thing about doing self-portraits is uh, you're always around. As long as you have a mirror, you can draw a self-portrait. It's a very good way to practice, self-identify, and work out some of your um, technique and so forth. So this is in 1887, uh, two years before the Starry Night. And here you see that very thick, heavy paint there and a nice palette of colors. This is sort of the signature golden yellow that uh, Van Gogh likes to use in his palette of colors. Um, again, uh, very electrified. I mean, if, if th this computer image does no justice, if you're really there and you saw some of these paintings, they're, they're really electrified and they're so, the colors are so deep and bold, it's, it's pretty impressive. Okay, this is, uh, very early on in his, uh, formal painting years, um, uh, 1882, and this is of rooftops outside of Hague, which is, um, in uh, the Netherlands, and here you see, um, you know, there's a bird flying in the sky, and it's just a common scene that you would see probably out in the outskirts of the city here, you know, there's a woodworker over here, there's some sort of rooftop factory, and he's probably painting this from a small window um, with the easel set up, and um, I like this one too because it's a little more painterly, you can see that he hasn't quite solidified his his style, where he has the big, thick, heavy, electrifying uh, paint, but uh, very much a skilled artist at this time. So this is Vincent Van Gogh's The Potato Eaters, 1885. This is after Van Gogh, you know, you can see his, his style is developing a little bit more here with the big, thick, heavy paint there, and uh, 
the light sources playing on the different figures and so forth, reflecting on the nose, the hat, uh, along the girl's neck and so forth, and on the table. But this is part of a subject matter, or part of a series of subject matter uh, of peasants uh, in and around France and, and uh, the Netherlands and so forth. And um, um, it's it's very much like a, uh, uh, a social commentary. Here we see, you know, they're really just eating potatoes and drinking uh, probably tea. Um, so this is like just the common everyday uh, activities of peasants. This is a pretty neat uh, painting here, 1885-1886. It's the skull with burning cigarette. And that's really what it is. He probably had a, a access to a skeleton in one of the uh, studios that he went through and put a maybe a lit cigarette in the, the, um, the uh, skull's mouth. Uh, it's kind of a, a good anti-smoking ad if you fast forward 100 years or so. But a uh, pretty neat uh, style painting. But, you know, the subject matter is a little bit dark. Um which kind of gives us a little bit of insight into the psyche of Vincent van Gogh. So this is uh, Vincent van Gogh's uh, bedroom in Arles, actually. There's a typo right there. It should be A-R-L-E-S, which is a city in France. Anyway, uh, Vincent van Gogh, he moved to Arles for a short period of time uh, to kind of seek refuge. Uh, he was pretty ill of a little, well, more than a little bit of alcoholism and suffering from a uh, smoker's cough, um, which is kind of what makes the skull with cigarettes so interesting. So anyway, when he arrived there uh, at his hotel room, he uh, painted a couple of these, actually, of his uh, bedroom. And uh, here you see the bed and the chair and so forth, but very electrified paint. And it's kind of a boring subject matter if you really think about it, but he makes it so colorful, so exciting, so vibrant that it just really draws you in. What's interesting about this, too, is the perspective is actually a little off. It's a little idealized. Um, the chair looks too small for how close it really is. And um, it's a very small room, but yet the chair makes the room seem very long. And here we can see the perspective is a little off on the bed. It looks like the bed goes a little bit too far for how short the room is. So, pretty interesting. Here's another one, uh, a night cafe, 1888. Uh, I believe this is an Arliss too. And here you see the, these light, these lamps right here, probably uh, gas or oil lamps. And um, very electrified. You hear, you see the, the light streaking off of it in these circular patterns. Um, not sure if there's any significance of the clock there. But again, uh, just like the other one, the perspective is actually a little off. The room probably wasn't this deep, but the pool table... Um, if you were to draw this um, following the rules of one-point perspective, it would, should be a little bit shorter, a little bit fatter. And I say it's a pool table, but it's actually, uh, I believe it's called snooker. It's played with uh, a couple of red balls and a cue ball, and there's no pockets. But anyway, very electrified, very thick, heavy paint, lots of texture. Uh, if you saw this in person, you'd be stunned by the color, and you'd be drawn to, to almost want to touch it, because it's like it's almost like thick stucco. Here's the Café Terrace at night, 1889, Vincent Van Gogh, of course. And um, this is of just a night scene. In fact, you could go to this café, and it pretty much looks like this today because of tourism and so forth. Here we see that night sky, too, that blue with the electrified lights uh, that are very idealized, very thick, heavy paint. Here we see the light source reflecting up the hill. Here we see a candlelight up in there. And then um, this is very much a, um, uh, a French or or um, European scene, lots of cafes, everyone's out in the front of a building. No one really hides in the back or inside. Everyone's outside because it's cooler at night. They eat later. They like to sit out there, smoke cigarettes. You eat, you talk more, and so forth. So the night just goes on and on. So it's probably what Vincent van Gogh spent a lot of time doing um, in between painting and so forth. But very, uh, very much an idealized perspective, too. It looks a little too long. And um, the perspective's a little off, which is kind of his his signature there. And the cobblestone street there, very neat. So this is a wheat field um, with cypresses. And Arliss, he was, um, um, you know, trying to get away from it all and so forth. So here's those uh, cypress trees, uh, much like the one we saw in Starry Night that was right here. And the, 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 the lights are all shining. So this is in the daytime. This is of a wheat field. Um, 
Uh, and again, it's a very idealized landscape. He did some watercolor landscapes as well, but this is oil paint. And um, here you can almost feel the movement of the air. You see that the clouds are, you know, they're not just sitting there in the sky. They're actually moving. So we're capturing that essence of time and space and all of those fun things. This is Vincent van Gogh's Wheat Filled with Crows, and if you notice the date, 1890, he actually died in 1890, and uh, many people believe this is actually his last painting, and um, it probably speaks somewhat to his life or his loneliness at this time, again, uh, somewhat mentally ill and uh, somewhat of a alcoholic, but um, here we see the crows, which are always a bad omen or bad luck, and here we see this dark sky ahead. So if you think about this path being life, so it's sort of like, you know, we're in this uh, vibrant colored area, um, moving towards, it's kind of dark, right? It's moving towards, you know, to where the crows are, um, which is a bad sign, into this dark sort of vague unknownness. So it's, um, it's really kind of sad if you think about it, because I'm sure Van Gogh knew that his life was going to end soon. And this is just um, his take or his view or his um, way of dealing with his own life ending. So I wish I could end on a happier note, but there's Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, very exciting artist, very much uh, a great post-impressionist contributor to the art world, um, but uh, had some issues.